G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a polar expedition and research boat. This week we're getting stuck into the arms that lock our stabilising wings down into the water. With the help of our friend Don, he's going to start building the structure for these arms, and Trev's over again, he's going to get stuck into the bolting mechanisms that lock these arms to the deck. So we're just having a couple of little issues with the, the 50 by 50 box section twisting ever so slightly. So down this end here, it's as if they've each rocked over very, very slightly to the right hand side, or clockwise. It's not necessarily the end of the world, they can be slightly twisted so long as we've got the pin at the one end and the flat plate at the other basically perfectly aligned. Um, it doesn't make a lot of difference if the, if the uh, box section itself is ever so slightly twisted. We are going to fair it all in so it's not going to really make any difference to the water flow or any of that drags or uh, drag level or anything like that. Um, the alignment is critical though for when the wing goes up and down to make sure that slider, the, uh, the arm doesn't go off to the side in the slider. Bit of a noisy episode this week with Trev getting on with cutting the bolted ends of the arms out, Dame fitting the pins into the hinge on the wing, and Don welding the arms and ends. Where are you up to in the process? Uh, yeah, just getting it all straight and tacked together. Yep. And then uh, be into welding those uh, those uh, hinge ends. Yeah, nice. Cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. We've dragged out our slab of high tensile stainless and he's going to cut a piece that's 150 mil by 100 mil. Then we'll take that into town and get that um, drill and tap. 190 by 100 mil. <laughs> Are you just trying to skive out of cutting this stuff? <laughs> Which is like a fair and reasonable thing given what it is. So that'll be, uh, that'll be the plate that the arms bolt into on the deck. So we'll get that cut out and then these here are the plates that are going to be welded to the top of the arms. And the reason we have to cut the stainless is because we need to drill and tap the stainless to match these plates here. So Trev's going to put a pilot hole through both and then we'll take one away to get it threaded and then we'll cut the clearance in the mild steel. On a good day our drill press is capable of doing those 32mm clearance holes in the mild steel. Not even remotely going to attempt the stainless, that's definitely something for an engineer with a mill. You're going to file the hardest stainless that you've ever come across. Make sure you're doing it with the shittiest file you can find. It works significantly better if it's rusty too. 54.6. That's the fucking clearance. Ha <laughs> ha! Right, so that's bang on. This thing's screwed up. Right, we can solve that. Just for a 
Es labi jai. Plates. The mild steel gets welded to the arms, the stainless gets welded to the boat. We need to drill through so both plates have the same alignment with the uh, bolt holes. Um, doesn't matter if they're out by a couple of mils from plate to plate. One's on the left hand side of the boat, one's on the right so it's irrelevant. It's mainly about the two plates aligning and being um, bang on. So what we're doing, getting a, um, a socket that we know that's going to be more than big enough to do the head of the bolt that we need and then we know that we're going to have clearance because the socket that we're going to use is almost certainly going to be smaller than that so we just need to space the bolts apart far enough so the arms are coming together nicely welded down the end here you can see a really lovely bead and then getting stitch welded along basically spreading out the weld so that we can keep the distortion down as low as we can. So we were struggling to get these little locking rings, we were struggling to get them onto our pins. But our solution is to cut a slot in them. So get it to focus, you see that? Basically just chop the slot into one side. It allows us to expand them out and squash them back down again. And because they're held with a bolt that goes all the way through, we can clamp it up really tight. It's going to work fine, it's going to allow us to get them on and off without any drama. Skill of the driver. Must be. Must be. Yep. Uh, the drill press hasn't changed. No. You're the only variable. <laughs> very, very variable. It <laughs> turns as well. Yeah, that's great. It's that's um, an added bonus around here if something works. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm keeping you out of trouble. Yeah. Not likely. <laughs> I've cut two of these. Oh. This is up on the beak? Yeah. Mm. Too similar in the beak. Yeah, the beak. Thick stainless steel. Mm. It's not an inch, it was a bruise. Oh. Good. It took the same amount of energy, but it did a fraction of the time. Right. <laughs> did your arms must be muscling up after all this cutting? Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yep, and uh, the pins is what I've been working on this morning. Yeah. Down that end. Cool. Oh, that's right. Damien was out here too. Yeah. Right. How's it actually sitting? Getting there slowly. So I've been cleaning this pin up on this end here. Um, trying this to, is hard because it wouldn't fit out. That's the one that galled up yeah. real bad. And then this one here, I'm just about to start on this, but I need to um, use that file to basically clean up that hole. Mm. Yeah. Right. So that's the morning's progress. Wonderful. So Trev's basically drilling the mild steel now. He's putting a, I don't know, it looks like about a 10 mil drill, something like that, through that mild steel as a pilot hole. And then we're gonna put the 32 mil drill through the, the mild steel. And what we end up with is this sort of setup here where we've got stainless bolted, so 25 mil stainless bolted to 20 mil mild steel. And that's gonna form the locking mechanism for our arms. So that mild steel is gonna be welded onto the three 50 by 50 uh, box sections for the arms We'll get to that shortly and it'll make a lot more sense, but that's going to be the locking mechanism there when those two are bolted together Yep. 
Yeah. And that's not. Yeah. The, like a steel sleeve inside the alloy pulley or something. Yeah. Right, we need to find grub screws. So, time for a progress report. Um, we've been going at it for most of the day. I'll give you an update as to where we're at. Don has got the pins welded onto the arms. The arms welded together and everything's true, straight and lovely. Over the back here, this hinge has been filed out, sanded out and cleaned up lovely. And the pin now basically fits. It's tight, but it doesn't matter. That's perfect. That'll work. And that's not going to be a problem with galling because of that plastic. We're still to get it to fit through this side here. So this side is proving a bit of a problem, but it's very, very close. So it's probably one of those things you just spend a bit of time with a file and um, yeah. And like I said, it was important that you use a rusty file that's been lying, you know, randomly and not looked after. That's the best way of doing these things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trev, over the back here. He's just shot into the engine bay to find some bolts. We are playing drill press mechanic. We got halfway through this hole and um, what we were finding was that the, if I go up to the top of the drill press, you got three pulleys. This pulley at the front here, this one here, um, was basically spinning. So this pulley here would spin, but the drill itself down here was locked up solid and the chuck was locked up solid. So it wasn't that the drill was spinning in the chuck, the actual chuck, the drive between the chuck and this pulley here had somehow basically died. We're trying to figure out what was going on. What we've figured out, you can just see in the front of it there, you probably won't be able to see it because of the light, but those two holes there, that's where grub screws should be and there isn't any. So basically the grub screws have fallen out. There's a little, right down the middle there, there's a little steel, um, like a liner that has a hex on the inside that does the drive, transfers the drive from the pulley down to the shaft that slides back and forth. That steel in, inner is sliding on the aluminium um, pulley outer. So we need to get some bolts. We're trying to find some 516 um, Imperial bolts. So we believe that's what the thread is. We're gonna stick them in. Bolts will work, it needs to be grub screws, but bolts will work in this instance for today so that we can get these plates drilled. Now, these are the plates that Trev is drilling. So this is um, 20 mil mild steel, 150 mil by 150 mil. They are cut to sit on a stainless plate like that and you can see that there's a couple of little pilot holes in that stainless that goes through to the mild. It means that we're creating matched pairs between the stainless and the mild and they get welded onto the opposite end of these arms. So at this end of the arm, that mild steel gets welded up over there. So it covers those three pipes um, and then you have essentially 100 mil sticking up clear and proud of, of those pipes. So if you look along the length of the, there you go, you can look along the length of the arm. Basically that arm slides down, the far end is going onto the wing and this end is the inboard end that bolts onto the deck. So jobs left to go today. We need to get the drill press up and running so we can get at least two of those holes drilled uh, in that 20 mil mild steel that allows the arms to carry on with so we can basically weld that plate to those arms um, and then in the background we can carry on uh, drilling and get the final two holes done so that the second plate is ready to go. The pins, so um, over the back Don's working on that last hinge that's uh, had a bit of galling and some problems and we can't get that pin to fit. We'll get that pin um, lined up and fitting in through that hinge so that we can then do the alignment and tack on that uh, stainless 2205 hinge cheek onto the mild steel doubler and then that wing is ready to go so that when Bruce comes back we can put it on the forklift and get it welded onto the side of the boat. Press. I'll be honest with you, some things have taken a turn for the worse with the drill press. <laughs> be so, um, Trev's basically killed our drill press. <laughs> so a couple of final jobs before we run out of steam. This is a piece of 50mm pipe before we run out of steam. Right, there's a bit of 50mm pipe. What we need to do is slice right down the centre of this um, so that we end up with two halves uh, and that's going to be welded onto the front of our blue beams just there. So what the plan is, we've set this up on some saw horses and clamped it down so it's sort of as stable as we can get. We've got some aluminium um, angle just over there. We're going to place that on top and that's going to allow us to get a straight line down the centre of that pipe.
Crikey, that's a bit warmer. Could you tell me when that's perfectly upright? Right. The snacks there if you're hungry, you just keep it possible. Yeah, I don't think Really? Thanks, Craig. So, some pretty cool news. We are getting our wings sandblasted and painted tomorrow. So, we get a deal with one of the local sandblasters, he's going to take them away because it fits in with his work schedule. So he's going to take them uh, tomorrow morning, he'll blast and paint one side, then flip them over the next day, blast and paint the other. So, have to get them ready, get all the crap off them and get all the crap out from underneath so they can get their forklift in and out. That's happening tomorrow morning. So there's a couple of things on these wings. So we haven't radiused the corners on these um, square mild steel sections on both, both ends. Um, and that's because we've ran out of time. So we will radius them, um, but it, right now it doesn't matter. That can happen after they're painted. We can just blast and paint the little bits that need to be done with our little machine. Um, I do need to take the hinges. So we got our pins in and fitting and everything. We still haven't fitted the hinge at this end down here, um, but that doesn't matter. What I've asked the sandblasters to do is to basically not um, blast and paint this end of the, um, the wing. So pretty much from the stainless that way, won't be blasted and painted. And that's okay, we'll do that with our little machine. We'll actually do it when it's on the, on the boat itself. The arms, we'll take those off so that they can lift these guys up. But the arms we'll work on um, over the next few days. We are gonna put a grease nipple in this end. So we decided originally we weren't gonna bother, but we are gonna actually fit a grease nipple. Got a couple of little guys there to, to install. Um, and that's gonna just help. Basically for us, the reason why I want to do it, it's not about corrosion or, or stopping it from binding up, galling up, anything like that. It's actually just so that I can shut it up. If there's more clearance than what we were planning, the grease is going to help to make that a little bit quieter. A little bit of a sneak peek. They worked. But more on that later. You got ice like summer sky If you smart could kill or die And now it starts to rain So let's enjoy it I can't